Hello my gaming grats and gets, welcome back to Happy Corrupt and Wargaming. This is going to be a very exciting video, we're going to go through all the new 10th edition terrain rules, and I'm going to teach you some really, really important things that you need to know in order to dominate your competition in the game of Warhammer 40,000. Real fast before we get going, guys, I am so excited to announce that I have my actual paid membership launched. It is going to be on Ko-Fi. I will have the link in the description down below. If you guys want to support my work, you like these videos coming out, and you want to help me continue to do them, I would be ever so grateful for your continued support. I have the Discord launching tomorrow. There will be a free area for it, but there will also be paid membership available as well. We have coaching services. We have teaching calls. We have um, individual list reviews. Lots of things coming, and it's all available now for you, my lovely grots and gits. So, do you want to become one of the Ademptus Cryptosodes? Join up today. Anyway, let's get right into the video. There are a lot of changes from 9th edition to 10th edition that are still confusing people. So I've had a bunch of people, members actually, request for me to do an updated video on terrain so that we can knock this stuff out of the ballpark so that you can dominate your foes. The current We have completely revamped our terrain rules. These are the rules that make 10th playable. You have to use these new terrain rules if you want 10th to be an enjoyable experience for you. If you try to play 10th with 9th edition terrain rules, it is going to be a disaster. If you're playing a anything that's not Eldar, you're going to hate the world, or Knights, you're going to hate the world, okay? So you need to new you need to use the new terrain rules. All right. There's a few really important details here. Gone. Poof. Bye. No more dense terrain. There's no more minus one to hit modifiers coming from terrain. I'm going to miss this. I kind of love that. I thought it was a really good part of the game, but it's okay because there's other things that are really good now. No more difficult terrain. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, so you're not ever going to be slowed down by those damn woods. So this is something that is also a little controversial, but we've got lots of movement modifiers that have been put into other areas of the game. So for example, certain units can slow you down. So there's still movement modifiers in the game. It's just not from terrain any longer. Now, the benefit of cover, so there's only one benefit of cover anymore. Since there's no more dents, there's no more movement modifiers, the only benefit from cover is getting plus one to your armor save. A, this is really important, and this confused a lot of people, but it's not confusing, so I'm going to help you out right here. If you have a three plus or better armor save, you cannot benefit from cover specifically against AP zero. All this means is that a three up armor save can never go to a two up armor save from cover. That's it. That's all it means. If you're a three up armor save and you're in cover and you're getting shot by someone who has AP one, you're still saving on a three up because you still have the benefit of cover and it essentially just cancels out the AP from your opponent. The only thing that this means is that a three up armor save can never go to a two up armor save. Essentially what they did is they just found a good way to make sure that we didn't run into the same problem as like armor of contempt from last edition. So this is actually a fairly elegant solution. It's not that confusing once you just you just talk it out. When you read it, it can be a, a little a little confusing, but it's not once we talk it out. All you got to remember is if you're a three up armor save, you cannot be improved to a two up from cover. That's it. All right, cool. So let's go on into the next section. We're gonna start talking about ruins, which is the most important and most prolific part of the terrain for tenth edition. Terrain now is the base, guys. The entire base counts as the terrain. Uh, this, th there is um, an exception for aircraft and towering when you're drawing your line of sights, but it doesn't. But that's kind of irrelevant when it comes to actually being wholly within the terrain. So here's the way that you gain the cover benefit of cover. Now, you gain cover if you're wholly within the terrain, or if you're partially obscured from line of sight to any model in the attacking unit by the terrain. That was confusing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch to the TTS view and I'm going to demonstrate exactly how this works so you will never be confused in a game again. So we'll just switch right over to TTS. Hello, we did it. TTS. All right. So let's have a little zoom in here. What does this mean? All right. So this right here is a ruin and this is the ruin base. You guys can see me drawing these beautiful red lines. This is the ruin itself. This is the ruin base. This base counts as part of the ruin. So if we have a truck. Let's just flip it. And this truck is right here. And then we have a unit of custodian terminators, the Alaris terminators. Currently, right now, they cannot see each other because this base counts as ruin. They cannot see each other. Now, if we were to do this and we have this truck 
touch the terrain but not be wholly within it you guys can see that it's not wholly within currently what happens is these terminators can see this truck but this truck cannot see these terminators this truck is also not partially obscured because it is now visible so it does not get the benefit of cover so this is a very bad place for the truck to be you either want to be not in terrain or you want to be wholly within terrain, okay? So this truck is right here. No one can see anyone. Now the Terminators can see the truck, but the truck can't see the Terminators. Now the truck can see the Terminators and the Terminators can see the truck. Currently, the truck does benefit from cover because cover now, when it's coming from a ruin, applies to everything. Mounted, vehicles, doesn't matter. Everything will get the benefit of cover from being in wholly within the terrain, the ruins terrain. So right now the, the terminators can see and shoot the truck. The truck can see and shoot the terminators. The truck would get cover. The terminators would not. Cool. Let's try this again. No one can see anyone. Terminators can see the truck. Everyone can see everyone. It is that simple. This changes a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a lot when you add in the towering units and this is very frustrating this is one of the reasons why towering is causing such big problems because towering ignores the ruin essentially so what the what this guy does if we put this knight warden down right here currently the the knight can see the terminators and the terminators can see the wardens everyone can see everyone nobody gets cover because the knight can draw perfect line of sight to the entire unit every single model and the terminators can draw a line of sight so right here what happens very frustratingly is the knight actually does get cover because what's happening is even though they can see through this you still can't look through the wall that is here so i'm going to draw this line here and if you see this line what this means is right there that terminator can not see everyone which is very very frustrating right so now the knight gets gets cover because every single unit in the attacking model in the attacking enemy's unit cannot draw a line of sight to every part of the warden's model. So the warden gets cover here. The terminators do not. Now let's say if we're like this, the terminators get cover and the knight get cover. Why? Cause the terminators get cover cause they're wholly within terrain and the knight gets cover because he is not fully visible to every single model in the enemy's unit. <coughs> Excuse me. That is the way it goes. All right, so that is the new uh, cover rules. Now, I want to show you one more scenario here. Let's do just like this. Let's say we have a truck right here. And we have this unit of Terminators like this. Currently, all of these guys can fully see the truck, no problem. But this one guy cannot see the truck. So what happens is the truck gets cover against the whole unit because not every single because it's not fully visible to every model in the attacking enemy unit. Even though these guys can fully see the truck, he still gets cover against every single one of these attacks. It's annoying, but it's the way it is. So essentially in 10th edition, everyone will always have cover. That should pretty much clarify everything. All right, so now let's go back into the PowerPoint and we're going to kind of rapid fire a few rules and then we're going to get to the single most important rule of 10th uh, edition's cover or maybe like close to the most important rule. All right. Uh, a couple different things here real quick. Ruins are still breachable, so infantry can still move through them, and so can beast. Swarms lost it. Sorry, Necrons, your Scarab Swarms are no longer nearly as useful as they used to be. So Swarms are no longer breachable, only infantry and beast. There's an interesting interaction where sometimes you can have a leader who does not have the infantry keyword join an infantry unit, and that entire unit has the counts as having the infantry keyword. But there's a special rule that GW wrote for this. If a rule only applies to models with a specific keyword, then it instead only applies to models in such a unit that have the correct keyword. So no, if I, I know that was a little bit confusing, but let me just clear, clarify what that means for you. A hive tyrant cannot breach through a ruined wall simply because it has joined a tyrant guard unit that has the infantry keyword. Doesn't work because the hive tyrant does not technically gain the keyword. The keyword only applies to the models that actually have the keyword, even the whole unit counts as having it. So the Hive Tyrant would still have to walk around walls or ruins while the Tyrant Guard can move straight through them. Okay, cool. So we have that. How do ruins work now? So we just kind of went through these rules. 
it's essentially obscuring from ninth edition if you're touching it with your base you lose obscuring and you can't see through it unless you're wholly within the terrain if you're wholly within you can see through it can be seen now this is a little bit new right here if you're standing on six inches off the ground in the ruin which is typically going to be the third floor of the ruin you will gain the plunging flyer fire rule which is plus one ap to your ranged weapons so if you're on the third floor or just six inches off the ground in a ruin you're going to get plus one to the AP of your weapons, which is exceptionally strong because as we just demonstrated, essentially every single unit on the battlefield is more or less always going to have cover. So that plus one AP will cancel out the AP that you, or will cancel out the cover save that your enemies are going to be getting, which is really, really valuable in this game. So those are ruins. Ruins are by far the um, most prolific and most common terrain that you're going to see competitively. There are a few other ones and we're going to rapid fire them right now, but they're not that important. So you don't really have to concern yourself about them. Creators and Rebel, you'll see them occasionally. Only infantry are going to get to benefit from cover, and only if they're wholly on top of the terrain. So, like in this picture right here, you see the one KS Space Marine and the one Marine. They both get cover. None of the other guys do. Um, barricades and fuel pipes. You'll basically never see these competitively, but I don't know. You'll, you, maybe you, you play a pickup game and you want to use them. It's cool. Uh, normal visibility rules. They will allow for two-inch engagement. And the eligibility to fight within two inches if the enemy unit is within one inch of the train feature. So there is a pipe. Your enemy unit is within an inch of it. You charge the pipe and you're within two inches of your enemy unit. You can still fight. Benefit of cover to models that are wholly within three inches and not fully visible to every attacking model. So that's the wholly visible thing that we've already spoken about. And... Um, benefit of cover. So basically anything can get benefit of cover. Mounted, doesn't matter. All right, and then we have Hills and Woods, and then we're closing up on the most important part, so just hang out for just two more minutes with me. Hills and Woods, normal visibility, you gain cover if not fully visible to every single model. So if we're looking at this picture right here, this knight will actually get cover from this Space Marine, if you kind of imagine, because the Space Marine is not going to be able to see the, through the floor to see the knight's legs. So he's actually partially obscured by the hill. Very dumb. Um, but it's just the way it works. Then we have woods. Woods you probably also won't really be seeing anymore since we lost the dense keyword. But maybe they'll be on um, on a few maps for you. If you're wholly within the woods, you can see out of them normally. And you're never considered to be fully visible. If at any point in time you have to shoot through woods to, or draw a line of sight through woods, you're, the enemy will get the benefit of cover. That's it. The only time this doesn't apply is if it's towering or aircraft, because towering and aircraft will ignore this. Um, if you're wholly within the woods, you also don't, you also do not give uh, cover to the person you're attacking because you're, you're wholly within. So that's the way it works. Pretty simple. Now this is the single most important part of tenth editions. Well, maybe not the single most. I mean, the base is probably the most important, but this is very, very critical. Currently in tenth edition. Models can move up and over two inches of terrain as if the terrain was not there. And towering units can do the same with four inches with, with four inch terrain. So in this picture here, we have a space marine that's standing on top of a container. Your typical containers in 40k are two inches tall, which means your space marines can just move up and over as if they were not there. They can essentially just move through it. This is exceptionally important. If you have a Beast Boss and Swigasaur, if you have bikers, if you have a dreadnought, you can just move right over these things. This is very critical for planning your movement phase and how far your units are going to go. Knights, on the other hand, can move four inches. I want to show you guys something on the TTS before I let you go here. Let's head back to the TTS map. Cool, here we are. Now we have this knight. He's hanging right here, and he wants to charge these terminators. Well, this part right here of the ruin, if you, we zoom in on it, this is four inches. Uh, that's, sorry, I'm on 2D. Let me switch to 3D for you. Uh, this should be this should be about th four inches. This should be about six inches. So this guy can cleanly, freely walk right over this if he wants to end up charging into our Terminators. This is a very powerful unit. This is why towering units are a bit of a problem for the game right now. If you had a crater, your truck, your Terminators, they can walk right over the crater, or not not the crater, the crates, the industrial crates. But your towering units can walk over four inch tall areas. This is so important. Don't forget it when you're planning your movement phase out. As you guys have seen in 10th edition, essentially everything will always have cover. And that is basically what we have to talk about when it comes to 10th edition terrain rules. So remember guys, your infantry get to move straight through these walls. 
your big boys cannot they have to go over and around unless you they have towering and they can walk over four inches so he could walk over here but he could not walk over here for example so just remember all of your rules review this video a few times if you need to um that's the way the game goes we love being holy within terrain because when we're holy within terrain we always get cover regardless of whether our opponent has towering or not and until next time basically everyone i hope you enjoy some happy crumping this is terrain 10th edition uh, be on the lookout for the discord opening up most likely tomorrow we're gonna have a really really robust conversations it's gonna be a good time there will be a free access to the discord and there will be also be the opportunity for paid memberships if you want to support me in my journey to bring you the best highest level most educational 40k content on the internet until next time my happy crumpers happy crumping enjoy your lives leave in the comments if you have any questions and i can help you out with any things that you might need all right, everybody, have a great day.